Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we are because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve, the problem that we are about to solve, is the one that you will find on page number 128. And today is our lesson number 24. On the very bottom of the page, on page 128, you will see problem number 3. That's the one we are doing with the three statements in it. And it, pretend, it pertains to the chart that you see on the previous page, on page 127. Look at the chart on page 127 and analyze the statements that are given to us. And we have to figure out which of the following statements uh, is true. Let's look at the first statement. The first statement says, for 2008, the dollar amount of sales at store R was greater than each of the other four stores. It asks us for dollar amount for store R for 2008. And we are asked whether or not this dollar amount of sales in store R in 2008 was more than the sales at all the other stores. Well, if you look at the chart on the, on the previous page, what you will find is that we are not given any dollar, dollar amount. No, no dollar amount, no dollar figures are given to us. Just percentage changes. Since only percentage changes are given, we cannot tell for sure which store has the highest dollar figure, the sales in terms of dollar figure, the highest amount, because we have no figures. We can tell which store has the highest change in, in terms of percentage, which, has, which store has the greatest percentage change in figures for sales from 2007 to 2008, but we cannot tell in terms of dollar amount, because there are no dollar amount given. This statement is not true. B says, for, let's do the B separately, A is wrong. A does not work. B says, for store S, dollar amount for 2008 was 22% less than for 2006. Let's see if this is true. So here is the 2006. Since no dollar figures are given, we're just going to pretend it's $100 so that we have a base to start out with. And then we are told that from 2006 to 2007, we have a drop of 7%. Drop of 7%. Well, if you have a drop of 7%, and if you started out with $100, in 2007, we'll end up with $93. Then what happens? Then we have a drop of 15%. And what is going on here is that, what is going on here is that, some people in their haste, either in their haste, I'm looking for the cap for this thing, if I put it down it's going to get all dry. Either in their haste or because of the lack of understanding on, on some people's part, they look at here and they say a drop of 7% the first year, a drop of 15% the next year. Therefore, 7 plus 15 represents a drop of 22%. That is not true. If you have a drop of certain percentage first year and a drop of a certain percentage the following year, 
the net drop, the final drop, is not going to be the sum of these two because the drop of 15% is a drop of 15% from here, from this point of reference, from $93. So if it drops by 15%, you end up with 85% of not $100, but $93. When you're trying to figure out a drop of 15%, you'll end up with 85% of $90. Now, what is the question actually asking? So, what is 85% of $90? You will see that it is less than, you will see that it is less than, it is less than 78. Now where did 78 come from? 78 represents 7 plus 15, that's 22. That figure is less than 78. And how do we know that? Well, let's find out for very quickly here. 15% drop. So, 93. 10%, 10 of 93 is 9. So if we drop 9 from it, approximately 9. 93 minus 9, 93 minus 10 is 83, so it's going to be 84. And then we want another 5%. Another 5% of 93 is about 4.5. You will end up with about you will end up about with about $80. You, you will not have 78. And the reason is because this 15% drop is not a 15% drop of 100, it's a 15% drop from 93. So that is not true. The second statement is not true. Second step is not true. Let me give you a simpler example to make you understand. Let me give you a simpler example. Let's say, let's say you start out with $100 and you drop by 10%. Drop by 10%. It becomes 90. And let's say you drop by another 10%. So first year, first year you start out, let's call it 2006. You started out with $100. In 2007, because you had a 10% drop, $100 becomes $90, and then from 2007 to 2008, if you have another 10% drop, another 10% drop will be 10% of $90. 10% of $90 is 9. You'll end up with $81. So you can't just go 10 plus 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. It's the drop. The final drop is not 20%. It's only 19%. You see that? Let me get this out of things out of my hand here so you can see it easily. You see? This is this is a separate example. This has nothing to do with this has nothing to do with what they are asking. This is a separate example. This example is separate. So from from 2006 to 2007 we have a 10 percent drop, and then from 2007 to 2008 we have another 10 percent drop. Therefore, some people might think that the total drop from 2006 to 2008 is 20%. I'm trying to make you understand that that is not the case. Because here, from, from 2007 to 2008, we're dealing with a different base. We're no longer dealing with a base of 100. So from 2006 to 2007, 10% drop takes you from 100 to 90. And then from 2007 to 2008, a 10% drop takes you from 90 to 81. Because 10% of 90 is 9. 90 minus 9 is 81. So the final drop that we see here, final drop that we see here from 100 to 81 is not the sum of these two figures, which is what they're doing here. They're taking 7% and 15% and coming up at 22%. That is not the case here. The second statement is false. Let's look at the third statement. Again, I need the room, so we need to raise everything. What is the third statement? It says dollar amount of sales at R in 2008 for store R dollar amount for 2008 was more than 17% greater 
then in 2006. So let's find out. Here's your 2006. What happens from 2006 to 2007? We are told that it goes up, increases by 5%. So if we start out with $100, by increase of 5%, we'll take it $105. And then what happens from 2007 to 2008? We are told that it goes up by another 12%. It's the exact same logic, exact same argument that we made in the statement B is the same argument that we're going to make it here, except for reverse reason. Here, the final increase, the final increase from 2006 to 2008 is not a simple matter of adding 5% and 12%. It's not a simple matter of adding the two percentages. Because here, the 12% increase that you see there is not a 12% increase of the original amount, is a 12% of 105. And a 12% of 105, of course, is more than 12% of 5. 12% of 100. So here we'll have 1.12 times 100. 100 times 105 rather. 1.12, 1.12 can be written as 1 plus 0.2. Therefore, 1.12 can be written as 1 plus 0 0.12. Watch what happens. So this is your 1.12 times 105. Times 105, and what happens is that, listen carefully. Here you get 1 times 105, so that's your 105, plus this 0.2. 0.12 times 105, as I explained to you, 12% 12% of 105 is greater than 12% of 100. Voila. What it is, we're not interested in. Just understanding that 12%, 0.12, 0 0.12 times 105 is going to be more than 0 0.12 times 100. And therefore that figure, whatever it is, the final figure is going to be more than 17%. More than 7%. It's not a matter of just adding up the two, two percentages. As I'm talking here, I'm trying to figure out if we can actually do it out very quickly. 12% of 100. And that's it. So, th so the third statement turns out the third statement is correct. Third statement is the only statement that is correct. And therefore the answer is C. Among the three statements, the only statement that is true is C. B was not true. A was not true. Answer choice C is the only answer choice that works. Therefore correct answer is C. That's all. I will see you tomorrow on day number 25. Alright? Thanks.